Hello, and welcome to Songs of Six. This is a fantastic city slash nation builder that's currently in early access. You can find the game on Steam, and I'll link to the Steam page in the description below. I will be playing on the test branch for version 0.66, which came out recently, and you can sign up for it in the better options using Steam. Have a look for the creator discussion on this, if you're not quite sure how. I'd like to say as well, thank you to everybody who voted on the community poll, but anyway, let's get going. So, when you start a new game, you have some options now to choose from. From the main game, where you can choose the tutorial as a campaign, which will show you some of the basics and help guide you in a pre-generated game. If you just want to jump straight into Songs of Six without customizing your game, then this is the way to do it. Alternatively, you can choose Random Game, where you have more control over what kind of game you want to play. It's up to you which one you want to choose, but Random Game lets you customize more, and it's what I'm used to, so we're going with that. For your first game, you can keep the difficulty sliders as they are, but you can use them to customize the difficulty of your game, by making your population need less or more furnishing, security, increasing or reducing the building degradation, the increasing the rate of good spoilage, and also how happy your citizens are, as well as introducing more scripts for late game stuff, such as a Dwarf Fortress reference, an eclipse that happens during the game, or a late game challenge from the Warlord Krull. Feel free to set these however you like, but adding the scripts will make things harder and therefore more fun. Once you're ready to start, make sure you've got the settings that you'd like, and then hit the go button, and that will bring us to the race selection screen. So now we have the race selection screen. Here you have access to six of the eight races to choose from as your starting population. Do note that this doesn't stop you from getting the other races in your city, as you can get them either through immigration or purchasing them, or taking them as slaves. Each of these races has their strengths and weaknesses, and they prefer and perform better in certain professions in comparison to one another. Let's start with the Cretonians. The Cretonians are temperate beings that love farming, and they are also quite good at it. They're naturally very easy to please, so it's quite easy to keep their happiness up. But they are pretty bad refiners and manufacturers, and they aren't that great in combat. Though with enough training and equipment, you can use them somewhat as troops in a pinch. The Dundorians are a dwarf substitution in Songs of Six. They're excellent craftsmen and miners, though they don't quite enjoy mining unlike they do with crafting. They prefer a cold climate where possible. They're quite good in combat and are less likely to go insane in comparison to other nations, but they're quite hard to please. They really love their beer, which is hard to produce at high scales, and don't produce food very well. They also hate some of the later races, the Garthemi and the Talapi, meaning they may fight and kill them when they encounter them in your city, whether they're civilian or not. Speaking of the Garthemi, let's move on to them next. They're an insect-like race, and they're pretty much the bad guys of the setting. They do prefer a warmer climate. They love meat, and they are fast breeders, and they're quite easy to keep happy, and they're good miners and bolt crawler ranchers. They perform pretty well in combat with very little equipment, thanks to both their fast movement and also having base pierce damage in combat without any equipment. They're terrible workers otherwise, being far slower at most jobs than other races, especially when it comes to producing things like knowledge, and when they are in combat, they do have weak morale, so they're more likely to run in battle, so you only need more of an overwhelming force to use them in combat. Humans, on the other hand, are what you and I are. Well, at least I hope so. They like temperate climates, and they're pretty good farmers. Maybe not quite as good as the Cretonians, but they're not as bad as other races. They're also the best scientists and managers in the game for getting your research and administration up. They are pretty unremarkable. Other than that, for most jobs, however, they perform them pretty averagely, especially in comparison to some of the more specialised nations. They're also quite hard to please, and out of all of the races, they're the most likely to go insane meaning you're quite likely to see a few head cases running around in your city after you've got a few hundred of them. Next up we have the Amevias, who are blizzard people that like dwelling near water in warm climates. They're good workers, and they can take a pretty good hit in combat, but they're not great farmers, so fishing is the name of the game for them. They also hate every other race in the game with a passion, and they'll try and fight and kill them if they find them in your city. They also make pretty bad slaves because they're not very submissive. Finally, we have the Talapi. The Talapi are basically elf standards. They like temperate climates, they're great at being woodcutters or herding animals, and they have a natural boost to their accuracy when in range combat. For this, however, they don't like other species very much, and they can be violent against them. 
Not quite as bad as the racist lizards, but still pretty bad. Okay, so let's choose one of our races. I think for this game we're just going to pick humans, because I quite enjoy playing as humans, and we can get the other races if we want to in our city, as we said, through either immigration or by using them as slaves. More on that later. After choosing your starting race, you can select up to five titles. You gain these titles through playing the game and reaching certain milestones. If you don't have any, that's fine. You'll just get them by playing the game, so don't feel bad about trying things and losing. Your later games might be easier by using these titles. You can mouse over them when they're unlocked to see what bonuses they give. We'll just choose the artisan because we have it here. If you have any of yourself, feel free to choose whatever you want along at home. Once you're happy with your titles, just click confirm, and from here we get into the map generation screen. You can choose a random map or one of the pre-generated maps as well by clicking on the arrows either side. We'll just go with a random map ourselves, as well as changing the latitude so that there's either more hot climate or cold climate. Additionally here, you can also input a seed or just choose a random one. If you'd like to play along at home with a very similar kind of world, you can take the seed that we have in this video. Just pause it now and you'll be able to copy it into your own game. Once you're happy with your settings, however, just click the generate button and the map will begin to generate for you. And then you can choose the site for your capital. Okay, now it's time to place your capital. This is quite a big decision and will change quite a lot depending on where you place your city. You can move around this map with the WASD keys or using the middle mouse button. Additionally, you can also see a mini map of the world in the top right, as well as the terrain in front of you. So you can tell what kind of terrain is around just purely based on the color. The blue here that we can see is the sea. Obviously, it could be other kind of water as well. Depending on how wide it is, basically determines if it's a sea or a river. These green locations that we can see are forests, so they have trees in them, whereas the sort of lighter green colours are more like fertile terrain, whereas when you get more sandy that's you're moving into more deserts and such. You can see that as we kind of move in between these different locations, we can see the fertility of a certain place is starting to go up and down, depending on how green it is, basically how close it is to water. And when you're creating your capital, you kind of want to make take that into mind. You want to make sure that you're someplace that has decent amount of water around it, either through a river or a lake that you can use in order to get crops out. When it comes to placing your capital, your middle square cannot be placed on top of water or mountains. When you place your starting location, it will incorporate the area shown by these blue boxes, and that'll be your starting area of the game. When you hover over a location, the game will try and help you make your choice by showing you in yellow some potential issues you might have. You'll most likely have to sacrifice something in order to get a position you want. So take these more of a guide rather than absolute necessities. Obviously, the more yellow you see, the harder it's probably going to be starting in that location. So when you're looking for a location, finding somewhere with some trees and fresh water access is nice. It'll make your early game easier. If you can find somewhere with some additional mining resources as well, that'll make you less reliant on imports later into the game for your manufacturing sectors, though you will still have access to some small amount of refinable goods in basic maps. All right, we've had a little look around the world, and I'm not that happy with the potential place we could start this city. If you want to, you can press the Regenerate button to remake the world, which will change up the resource placements in it. So if you're not quite happy with it, just click the Generate here, and it will regenerate the whole map for you. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of a look around, and I quite like the idea of this location here. It's got some good fresh water access, as well as it has the potential for some additional resources to be getting out of it, thanks to our location near some ore and some coal. On top of that, we got some forests to help our early game just a little bit, so I think this would be quite a nice place to start. If you're not quite happy with the starting location you have, you can also change it slightly by basically editing the world should you want to. Say if we wanted to add in another resource here, maybe some clay, maybe something else that we want to do, if we want to add in some more water, if we find a good spot otherwise, you can do that. At the end of the day, it's a single player game. You do what you want and do whatever you want to make your game a little bit easier, especially when you're starting off. Maybe later on, you can do something that's more based on what the map actually gives you. Oh, and I should mention, if you want to delete something that you've put down into the world, just click on the little kind of no entry symbol and just click on that and then click on the world and that'll get rid of it for you. So once you're happy with your starting location, click where you want it to go and that will place down your capital. The world will then generate the rest of the world's nations, including your neighbours, which you can then expect if you'd like to afterwards, kind of see what the political landscape looks like around you. You can see the mini-map on the top right, sort of the overall nations of the world, the ones of the same colour, the same nations, and you can have a little look around if you'd like to as well. When you're ready, click the right arrow to continue, or alternatively use the left arrow to go back, or you can regenerate the world should you wish to. Once you're happy you've inspected your neighbours enough, click the right arrow and it will begin to load up the world where your capital will sit. Okay, once the loading is done, you've come into your map. Now you need to place your throne. This is an important building. You cannot let your enemies take it. 
your starting position for it does matter and it will determine what resources are close by at the start of the game. You can zoom out using the mouse wheel to get a full idea of what resources are on your map. Green resources are harvestable plants that you can forage for, white boxes show animals that you can use for hunting, and things inside these red boxes show mineable resources. If you're not happy with your capital layout, before you place your throne you can also regenerate the map in order to change it up a little bit until it's till you're liking. So where do we want to put our throne to begin with? Well, probably putting near some trees, some water, or some animals will help you a little bit in the early game. The trees will make it so it's easier to build your constructions out of wood rather than things like mud. And also, because there's trees, that usually means the fertility is better, so it's better for growing things like crops. And having the animals nearby means you have some form of huntable food before your crops are finished growing. And also means you can get some hunter huts down just so you can get your early game food in the go. I think for us, putting our settlement on the north side of the river would be better. We've got access to the water, the animals, and also the trees that we want. But we're also quite well situated for using this sort of northern mountain as well. The land doesn't seem too bad here. The fertility seems quite high for what we're wanting. So in order to put your throne down, you want to zoom in just so you can put your throne down here. Choose a good location. We'll keep it a little bit away from the water just so we have room to expand our farms out there, as well as our irrigation systems when we get to it. And once we put that down, that's us. Our capital is started. So in the base game, without any titles, you'll start with 10 of your initial population, whatever race you chose in your little village. However, later, once you've unlocked some titles, this initial population might be a little bit higher. From here, we need to start thinking about feeding and housing our population and starting to create our city from scratch. Don't worry too much though, you do start with some basic resources just to keep you fed for the first couple of days and help you get your first couple of buildings up as well. All right, hopefully that was useful for explaining a little bit more about how to make your world in Songs of Six. Feel free to use that seed at the start if you'd like to use a similar world to mine. Otherwise, keep tuned to see how we create our city. Let me know if you want me to cover anything specific in Songs of Six going forward, and if you like what we do on the channel, consider becoming a member. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care.